From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. As always, it would be such a joy to be in your home personally talking to each of you, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity that we have of coming to you in this way at least, because the world is facing some things that are very, very vital to all of us. This first headline, aging baby boomers hang on to drug habits. Oh, I've never seen anything like it in my lifetime, the drugs in our, in our country. And the end of the U.S. dollar monopoly and the birth of the New World Order monetary system. Whoa, they're telling the U.S. dollar is going out, the monopoly we've had on the world. And then former National Security Advisor says, ISIS is here to stay. You know, I was really disturbed. In fact, I was talking to Ken uh, Muehlhoff just before we went on. And I said, Ken, I can't get over it. I just read something that the FBI is investigating ISIS in how many states? 50. All of them. They're there, and um, it's terrible to say they're here to stay. Well, I do want to update you about Jack. I'm just so thrilled. He's doing so well. In fact, I told you the other day that uh, one of the things that uh, he came out uh, very vocally saying, I want a donut. <laughs> well, he wants a lot more than a donut now. And he's eating and talking and communicating and doing work from the office already. And praise the Lord, his mind is as clear as a bell. And uh, I'm so grateful for his progress. So keep him in your prayers. He'll be back before you know it. And I do want to welcome back Pastor Robert Jeffers. And he, of course, is the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas with 12,000 members. Is that not good to hear? 12,000 members when many of the churches today are empty? So I praise the Lord for your ministry, Pastor. Not only that, you have a regular radio broadcast, and we praise the Lord for that. Now, you're on five days a week with the radio. That's right. Our program is Pathway to Victory, and we're on uh, 800 stations Monday through Friday, and then our television program is on on the weekends on TBN and on Daystar. Praise the Lord. That is just so wonderful. We praise the Lord for your ministry, well, Pastor. Thanks for having me back. Yes, well, it's a joy to have you. <laughs> I must say that we praise the Lord for his knowledge of the Word, and he's not afraid to speak out for which I praise the Lord for today, Pastor. Not afraid to okay. speak out. Now, we're going to be speaking out on this program about some issues that are really on my heart. The first one, friends, has to do with drugs. I can't believe this first headline. Aging baby boomers hold on to drug habits. I can't believe it. The, even by the time they become middle-agers, they're still holding on to their drug habit. Here's another one. Spiked heroin is on the rise. And you know, it's a contribution to death. Many people are dying because of their heroin. And then, alcohol, the beloved enemy. Now, this is a book by Jack Van Impey, and certainly it is a beloved enemy, enemy going on. Um, this is historian Sir Arnold Toynbee, and he had identified alcohol as a major force in the destruction of how many civilizations? Nineteen civilizations preceding our own. And evidence of alcohol's destructiveness is all around us. Nevertheless, our love affair with this enemy continues. I'm so sorry about that that so many people are drinking, even though they're going to church, saying they're a Christian. Here's something that shocked me. Moody Bible Institute drops alcohol and tobacco ban for employees. When I was growing up, Moody Bible Institute was one of the most right down the line on all of these issues that, that could be. Oh, it just really burdens my heart. Now, the school follows Wheaton. That's another school 
Huntington, and Asbury. They also have dropped their values in that line. And then Cornerstone University lifts 68-year ban on staff drinking alcohol. But huh, students still must stay dry. Well, that's not a very good example, is it, to the students? We're not the only country going over to Russia. They have 7 million alcoholics. Here's somebody crying over one of their relatives dead because of drunk driving. Russians are literally dying for a drink. And then church-based alcohol rehab in Russia and Ukraine constitutes perhaps the most ambitious social outreach undertaken by Christians since 1991. We need to reach out, show them the truth. Addiction to porn is keeping many Christian men from a mature relationship with Christ and a married relationship with a woman. Fleeting images. Now, there's a big uh, article right there by it. I wish that we had time to read it all. But I am going to go to our guest today. And I'm going to ask about drugs, about pornography, and all the things that we've just mentioned, friends. Is this a big sign pointing to the return of our Lord? Did he say it would happen just prior to his coming, doctor? It did. The Apostle Paul, Rexella, also talked about the lack of morality in the last days. In 2 Timothy 3, 1, Paul said to his son in the ministry, Timothy, know this, that in the last day there will be terrible times. And that Greek word translated terrible means without restraint. Uh, without moral restraint. And that's what we're seeing happening all around us right now. Just look at what is happening in our own country. The attempt to legitimize same-sex marriage, something that God has certainly condemned. Uh, the acceptance of abortion, the murder of a child within the womb. We've all been horrified in these recent weeks what we've seen coming out of Planned Parenthood and trafficking in the parts of, of, of the embryos of, of children. It is horrible what is happening. But I think part of this lack of moral restraint is also seen in the increasing addiction to drugs, whether it be marijuana or alcohol. And you know, Rexella, the Bible says, right. by whatever a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. And I'm afraid there are many Christians who are living as slaves to addictions, whether it's to alcohol or pornography or marijuana or some other kind of drug. The good news of the gospel is this, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in your life, if you're a Christian, that can break you free from these addictions. You don't have to be a slave to alcohol, marijuana, pornography, or anything that would destroy your life. You know, Jesus said about Satan, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's Satan's plan for your life, to destroy everything important to you. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, I don't know if you knew this, uh, Pastor, but Jack was reared in the home of an alcoholic. Mm. His father, in fact, he was from an abusive home. His father used to beat him when he would become, uh, you know, drunk. But praise the Lord, what you are saying right now is so very, very true. When his father became a Christian, his whole life was turned around. Jack was a teenager. When he saw his father accept Christ. But what you're saying really was exactly what Jack saw in that home. When the Lord comes in, he not only gives you eternal life, he gives you a new life here. Yeah. And we can live victoriously over those things. Jack's dad never had mm -hmm. another drink, Pastor, and mm -hmm. he'll do that for anyone hey, who'll come. God has the power to do that. And you know what we're talking about, Rexella, it really is one of the signs of the coming of Christ. I've written a new book called Countdown to the Apocalypse, and I talk about three of the major signs that are pointing to the coming of Christ. The rise of radical Islam, the global persecution of Christians. Jesus talked about that, but also this increasing moral discipline disorder. And it's easy as Christians for us to become discouraged about the lack of morality, the yes. lack of moral restraint. We need to remember, though, that this is a sign Jesus predicted that would precede his return. It is a countdown. We're on that countdown. I really believe it, friends. We shouldn't be closing our eyes and burying our head in the sand because, uh, you know, uh, people, have, I've said it on our program many times, I'm afraid to watch television. Well, hiding your head in the sand doesn't change it. 
it only aggravates it and makes it makes it worse. But we need to really stand up, take a stand for the Lord. And we're going to go on with something else here in America. And when there was a survey, uh, you know, something that Jack has always emphasized that this would be a major sign pointing to the end times, the economy. And when there was a survey in America, this was the number one concern among everybody about the economy. Take a look at what Jack had to say about it, please. This whole thing is about debt. And the Bible teaches that there's an hour of tribulation coming. And when you hear about what could possibly happen right now in America, if they don't get this problem settled, and we think they will, but if it doesn't, there's an hour coming when it's going to be a catastrophe in this nation like we've never known it and spread globally. And I think it's coming very soon, if not now, very soon. Mm. You say, why? Because James chapter 5, verses 1 to 4 says, Go to now, your rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you in judgment day. And they're wailing. Why? Because they've heaped together great amount of capital, all kinds of money, all kinds of material goods in verse 4. But in Revelation 18, which is the tribulation hour after we're raptured, they are really crying their hearts out. Chapter 18, verse 10, in one hour is thy judgment come. Verse 17, in one hour so great riches has come to nothing. Verse 19, in one hour is she made desolate. It happened in Germany back around 1914. Germans went to the markets with bushel baskets of marks worth a million of American dollars only to take home a peck of potatoes. Folks, those days are coming. Friends, let's continue on and see where we are headed. Take a look at this report. The end of the U.S. dollar monopoly and the birth of a new world monetary system. It's coming. Again, the war on cash. The world is defenseless against the next financial crisis, warns Bank for international settlements. <laughs> We're defenseless. World markets plunge. Bank lines grow as Greece's financial crisis deepens. Well, we know that they now uh, have a, a little bit of hope in the future, and that this next headline will tell you about it. The really worrying financial crisis is happening in China, not Greece. Well, Greece has uh, made an agreement with the EU, uh, so they're kind of coming out of it. But here you see China. And I believe Greece also. China expected to post worse growth since its financial crisis. Whoa. China never dreamed of that one. What the U.S. must do to avoid another financial crisis. And the ex-CIA cyber blackout shows what enemy could do. Oh, dear. A blackout? Cyber blackout? They could ruin us if they keep it off long enough, the Central Intelligence Agency report. Well, I'm going to go to our guest today. Now, as Christians, what should we do about this financial, uh, terrible thing that seems to be happening worldwide, economy crisis? How about it, Pastor? What should we do? We can hear all of these headlines, Rexella, and develop, unfortunately, what I call a bunker mentality. You know, we're just going to hide and store up our gold and our guns and our peanut butter and wait for the right. end to come. That's that right. is not a Christian response. You know, in Matthew 5, 13 to 14, Jesus told us what we ought to be doing right now. He said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Jesus said, first of all, we're to be salt, a preservative. We're not going to prevent the collapse of this world, but we can delay the collapse by standing up and pushing back against evil in this world. And you know, I believe, Rexella, we're in the shape we are in, yes. not because of unbelievers, but because of wimpy pastors and wimpy Christians who have allowed evil to overtake good. We need to stand up and push back against this tide of immorality and ungodly principles that we're hearing about. But at the same time, 
We're to be light, Jesus said. We're to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And the good news is, Rexella, there's never been a better time to do that. The light shines brightest in the darkness. Yes. And as this world gets increasingly darker, the hope of the gospel shines that much more brightly. This is a time for Christians to stand up push back, but to share the love of Jesus Christ. Absolutely, Pastor, I agree 100%. You have got so much more to offer than temporal things. Somebody the other day was talking to me about, well, we're doing this, we're doing that, and do nothing about eternity, because uh, this is not going to last very long. It's very temporary here on earth, Pastor. It really is temporary. And, and Rexella, one of the things, and of course, you know, I teach on Bible prophecy Absolutely. just like you and yes. Dr. Do so faithfully. But those who read Bible prophecy need to be careful not to fall into the trap of fatalism. Well, these things are going to happen anyway. There's nothing we can do. Uh -huh. Look, God has written on his calendar the date that the end is going to come. That's in his mind. But until that time, we we should not cede one square inch of this world to Satan. Yep. We need to push back and share the gospel. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. I am so happy that we have something better to offer than a temporary dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that That's true? Right. All right, friends. I trust that uh, you're ready for what is coming in the future that your heart is looking for the coming of the Lord because when he comes, he's going to set everything straight, and which leads me to something that's really good. They're talking about a new world order. Here, this is it, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. Take a look, please, at the commercial. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, Israel's Messiah, and Christianity's Lord and Savior taught us to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This appearing of Christ to set up the soon coming Judeo-Christian New World Order is about to happen. According to 1,000 biblical prophecies from the lips and pens of 16 Old Testament Jewish prophets and eight of the 12 New Testament apostles, this will become the most monumental event in history and Micah announces that this will immediately usher in God's final and eternal government. He states, the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Christianity's New Testament apostles describe this global ruler as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Isaiah, another prophet of Israel, said, Unto us a child is born, virgin birth, and unto us a son is given, second coming of Jesus. When this glorious hour happens, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Wow! Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and deliver us from this global mania, mass slaying, endless terrorism, and unending war. For further details, order coming soon, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. The New World Order, yes, it is coming. It's a Judeo-Christian New World Order, praise the Lord. And the Lord is going to set everything straight. He's going to be the leader when he comes back. And I'm going to be sending you a gift with your, with your order, and that is Israel's Final Holocaust, a book written by Jack, because he knew that this was all coming. So there's the 800 number, and there's the address. Please, don't put it off. Are you hiding your head in the sand? You won't if you watch this, I guarantee. Judeo-Christian New World Order, my gift with your order. Now, friends, uh, is ISIS really spreading, especially in the Arab world. I'd like for you to take a look at some of these headlines. Is it really spreading? ISIS could have 42 million supporters in the Arab world. Yes, it's spreading. Islamic State captures first territory in Afghanistan. Yes, it's spreading. ISIL extends reach to Ukraine in challenging Russia. Yes, it's spreading. Islamic State threatens to topple Hamas in Gaza and uproot Israel in a video statement. Yes, it's spreading. It wants to take over that whole area, including Israel. That's a real goal. ISIS in Sinai claims rocket attack on Israel. They're confessing to something, saying that, well, we did it, but praise the Lord, they didn't succeed. Former National Security Advisor ISIS is here to stay. Now, 
the developments in the Sinai Desert have brought concerns of ISIS, especially since they want to attack Israel. They're right there. And then going on, we foiled Islamic State July the 4th attacks says FBI director, you know, we were uh, really anticipating something would happen, but the FBI was prepared. Praise the Lord for that. Now, I'm going to ask our guest today, what future prophecies do you mm -hmm. think the Bible gives to us about the expansion of Islam and all the rest, Pastor? How do you feel about that? The Bible is clear, right? It is, and that's one of the things I talk about in my new book, Countdown to the Apocalypse. Very good book. Because uh, it talks about the rise of radical Islam, and I believe the Bible gives us a future of what's going to happen with this movement that so hates Israel. For example, in Ezekiel 38 verses 1 to 6, there is the prophecy that a group of Muslim nations will attack Israel during the Great Tribulation. One of those Muslim nations mentioned is Persia, which is today's Iran. Yes. And so we're seeing uh, the lead up to that, I believe, right now. Of course, God's going to deliver Israel miraculously, but there will be an attack of Iran and other Muslim nations. And then we find in Revelation 9 and 16, we find in the final days of the Earth's history, a movement of 200 million uh, military men and women from the East that will move toward Israel. You know, in the past, we used to think that might have been China. Maybe right. it is, but many believe today it could be a coalition of Muslim nations. Right. And then one other thing, in Revelation 24, John says he saw the souls of those who had been beheaded right. because they would not take the mark of the beast. And you know, Rexella, I used to read that passage and think, beheaded? Who in the future would resort to that arcane practice of beheading? Well, I think we know the answer to that today. Absolutely. That's one of their major ways Absolutely. of killing people. Well, I want to ask our guest once again a very, very important question, and Jack has emphasized this so much. Dr. Jeffers, mm -hmm. do the Islamic people and the Christian people pray to the same God? Someone the other day came to me and they said, well, who cares the name? It's all one God. Do we pray to the same God? Let me answer that question, Rexella, by just supposing that you announced that today your special guest was going to be Dr. David Jeremiah. So people tuned in and they see me and they write in and complain, well, you said Dr. Jeremiah is going to be here and that guy's here instead. <laughs> and you were to say, well, that right. guy sometimes goes by the name of Robert Jeffers, sometimes David Jeremiah, sometimes Joel Olstein, but they're all the same person. They're all preachers. That would be ridiculous. Good. Names means something. The God of the Bible is not the Allah of the Quran. Allah in the Quran is an imaginary God. The God of the Bible is real. Allah doesn't recognize Jesus as the Son of God. The Bible says God has one Son. His name is Jesus Christ. Allah says you are saved by good works. The God of the Bible says it is through faith in Jesus Christ. Allah is not the same as God. That's right. We do not pray to the same God. And there is only one way to have and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father, Jehovah, but by me. Only one way to our heavenly home, where our God, the living God, the, the only God, lives. You know, we can say there are other gods, but there are no other gods. Jesus is the Son of the living God. He died for you. He died for me. Are you willing to say, Lord, I'm so sorry for my sins? We've gone over some of those things about heroin, about pornography, and all the other things that exist in people's lives that say they're Christians. But the Lord wants a holy life in his children. We, are you willing to say, oh, Lord, I come to you. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me. Will you pray this prayer, please, with Dr. Jeffers right now? Lord, I open my heart to you. Come in. Will you pray, please, doctor? I will. And let me just say, you know, I don't know when Christ is coming back again, but I know this. Either he's coming or we're going. But for all of us, time is very short until we meet God. 
And I want to make sure that you're ready to meet God by having your sins forgiven, by trusting in Christ as your Savior. Would you pray this prayer with me? If you're ready to receive Christ as your Savior, dear God, thank you for loving me. I'm so sorry for the way I have failed you in so many ways in my life. But I believe what you've said, that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins, to take the punishment I deserve for my transgressions. And right now, I'm trusting in Jesus and Jesus alone to save me from my sins. Thank you for forgiving me and help me to start living the rest of my life for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I trust you prayed that prayer. I'll never forget when I did. I've told you this before. I was 17 years old. And my brother, who is now Dr. Robert Shelton, a wonderful minister, heard me crying in my bedroom. I was a church member, but I knew all about the Lord. I didn't know him. How grateful I am for that. He walked in. He said, Rexella, do you want to be saved? I said, yes. I want to know him. I want the Lord in my heart. I want to be a, his follower. I want to be a Christian and really live for him. And he led me to the Lord right there in my bedroom. So you didn't have to go to church to get saved. If you prayed that prayer with Dr. Jeffers, you just became a child of God. Please write and let me know. There's my address. I'll send you this little booklet for steps in a new direction. Maybe you're hooked on that alcohol or heroin or something. The Lord will deliver you. You have him in your heart. Please write me. First steps in a new direction. He'll walk with you all the way. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive this wonderful offer of the week. And it is the Judeo-Christian New World Order and my gift with your order. Israel's final holocaust. Chuck? Oh, thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order. Coming soon, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day. 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Call today for this monumental video. Rexella? Oh, yes, don't put it off. There's the 800 number, and there is the address. We will get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Judeo Christian, will they really believe? all of them in the Lord, the new world order coming. And here's my gift with your order, Israel's final holocaust. So make the call right away. You know, it's so wonderful, isn't it, to trust in the Lord as we go through these last days together. The light of God's love shines brightest against the darkness of this world. How true. I trust that we'll, uh, you'll be able to watch us again next week. We'll look forward to being in your home. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>